Hey all, welcome to a, a quick tutorial on Selenium WebDriver. Now, I've been posting and blogging a bit more about the use of Selenium, uh, just to highlight some of the things that I've been doing well recently and in previous employees, putting together Ruby-based web automation frameworks using Selenium. And one of the things that I've been told is the transition between Selenium 1 to 2, uh, getting it going with Ruby when there's so much information about, say, you know, C Sharp and Java, is a little bit difficult. And making that transition seems, uh, seems a lot of work. If you read over the official Selenium HQ documentation, uh, it doesn't seem, you know, it's not so straightforward. One of the important things that you want to know is just what's the basics I need to get going and start using Selenium WebDriver, and then you know you can build it out. You can start putting a proper framework together. You know, parameterize your data. Um, what you do, uh, distribute tests over different browsers, maybe different machines in the grid format, etc. But you want that sort of thin slice of sashimi just to go. Let me touch on all of those little bits of functionality that will show me this is working. Let me underwhelm you by how easy that is. So what we're looking at, as always, is a Selenium, ba uh, sorry, uh, Ruby-based Selenium automation framework for web testing. We can use Ruby as you could use the other languages, obviously, to interact with the you know the backend databases, the web server, uh, the Windows environment or the Unix environment, etc. This is on Windows, as you can probably tell, because there's always more documentation about Unix. Uh, so. Here is a Windows take on how quickly we can get going with Ruby Selenium. Here we go. As it's Ruby, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've installed Ruby. I have done, so I can do a Ruby-V just to check. Uh, 193, we're actually on 200 now, I think. But if you go to the YouTube channel, which uh, I will link in the blog post, but obviously you'll be watching this on a video anyway, the first video is how to install and set up Ruby. Instructions remain the same, but the versions change. So install Ruby, and once you've done that, what you'll need to do is check your gems. Now gems, as you'll remember, in Ruby are like you know C sharp DLLs. They're packages of features and functionality that you can draw on. And what we'll need is the Selenium web driver, but the Ruby bindings for it. So if you go to the Selenium web driver downloads folder sorry downloads area of the website you'll see here we go there is a Ruby language binding and if we click it we don't download anything we go to the website where we we're, we're told to invert the gem command and install Selenium web driver well okay what I'll do first of all I'll just do a gem list and indeed I don't have it the usual suspects of our spec Cucumber and a bunch of others that I use, mini test, where's unit, here we are, test unit, are there, uh, but we haven't got a Selenium web driver. So, gem install Selenium web driver. And assuming I've typed that correctly, it takes a little time because it needs to go off and find where that web driver is. We're looking, it would seem, to, for 243. 9.2 million downloads, can't be wrong. And 64,000 for this version. Okay, so people keeping up to speed. Okay, so it's fetching it there. And indeed, it's fetching 243. That's fine. So here we go Selenium Web Driver. So, Selenium Web Driver, remember, the Ruby bindings give us access to all of the commands that Web Driver can provide, but using Ruby, using Ruby commands. Okay, so we've got Ruby installed and we've got Selenium WebDriver. Let's just make sure. Jim uh, install. Okay, here we go. WebDriver 243. And we know that's correct. Great, so let's just clear this off so we've got a view on what's happening. What now? What complicated steps do we now need to follow in order to configure the Ruby? Selenium web driver testing environment. Well, I think we're done. Okay, so the first thing to do is go to Interactive Ruby. Not much of a change, but here is Interactive Ruby. And if we were running a Ruby script, we'd want to call in Selenium web driver. So 
let require and it would be selenium dash web driver okay web driver let's make sure we spell that correctly and over just says true and it's like fine I've got it then what we would do we would create a reasonable sounding variable in this case we'll call it browser and we'll say the browser equals selenium refer to the web oops web driver dot for and we'll use Firefox as that's going to be the one that's built in already Oop. so we've got a little warning box here that's fine Oop, it's already going for it anyway allow access okay wait a minute have we by any chance just already conducted some automation using WebDriver absolutely very simple but that will always be the first part of your test opening a browser this is web testing so we've opened a browser that's it we have already done some Ruby Selenium automation <laughs> using WebDriver okay so let's do something a bit interesting let's say again we're going to test some websites so we will call browser and we will use the navigate whoop, again good if you spell it correctly navigate two and let's do our usual favorite of HTTP google.com oops google.com because the browser navigate to google.com that'll do and it's probably going to go to code yeah dot code uk in my case that's fine we could fix that later but that's fine and again there we go we've just invoked against our browser object the method navigate dot two uh, because there's back and there's forward and there's some other good stuff we could put in here but to google.com and here we are we're on google.com okay so if we now go let's see browser we want to find some of these if you've been doing some uh, Ruby Selenium these will be familiar to you or some Selenium I should say uh, find element it will be with reference to the name and that box I believe is called Q watch this break and we will send keys of well let's just go you know hello right whoops again always good if you spell it correctly so browser find element by the name of Q which should be this box here and send keys hello I've seen scripts that break this out so you just find the element and then you send keys uh, there's no need let's have a look at this okay so hello boom so we found the box we've put hello in right and then what we would want to do and again you could have run this together is find element again let's go by name because I know it off by heart of button Google I assume that means uh, button Google and we will do a dot click whoops dot click let's just check find sorry browser find the element with the name button G and click on it so it should go click and return results and there it is so there we go so just like that we have invoked selenium web driver created our new object here this you know this browser element in Firefox that opened Firefox we've navigated to Google we've then found the query field the text field and sent the text hello and then we've clicked on the search button and we've got our results back and we're done that's it we've already started to automate using Ruby Selenium WebDriver and a little touch of Firefox don't be afraid of just getting into this and starting with it you know you can capture this into a Ruby file uh, you can start to test already you would want to of course put a framework around this and build it out properly but how quickly can you start it's pretty easy right okay I'm gonna leave it there because I just wanted to show you that very quickly so go download and have a play <laughs>